What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today we're looking at another Fellow product. And this time, we're diving into the Fellow Atmos vacuum canister. First off, you see slows oxidation, then you turn the box and you see battle oxygen, and you give it another turn and twist to remove air. So any guesses on what this product actually does? They are leaving very little room for imagination in their marketing, but that's good for all of us smooth brains out there. We don't want to have to think too hard. And it's obvious that this removes oxygen to keep your coffee from getting stale. And it's a nice clean piece. As you'd expect from Fellow, they do a good job. And the name Atmos basically means atmosphere, but we're not talking about outer space or, you know, the type of atmosphere I picture when I close my eyes. But we're actually talking about is atmospheric pressure. Now this creates pressure in the way that it pumps out the air and I don't think that it creates atmospheric pressure but it's a cool name and if it keeps my precious coffee fresh then I'm all for it. But let's dive into the features. The first and most important piece of this whole thing is the integrated vacuum pump. So a lot of other containers that pull air out require a separate instrument to do so. This one is fully contained within this lid using some kind of witchcraft, a few turns of the outer ring and you have a fully engaged anti-coffee staling device. Plus the pattern on the outside here is kind of cool looking. Next is the airtight silicone seal. So this is kind of obvious. It's a nice soft silicone seal that basically keeps air out and also keeps the pressure in. And it also makes a nice sound when you put it on. It goes Next up is the vacuum lock indicator. Now this is a super simple mechanism. As you twist it, this little circle will depress and show a green indicator saying that enough pressure has been created and enough oxygen has been kicked out. Then you can test it by doing this, but it's not recommended. Just remember, I'm a professional driver on a closed course. Of course, the easy release button is my favorite feature as it creates an extremely satisfying sound when you press it and it releases all the pressure in the unit. That's right. On the box, they also brag about this borosilicate glass and say it's as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger. To me, it, um, it feels like glass. And then if you read the fine print inside their little handout, it says, please pay attention when setting on hard surfaces. Product may chip or crack if not set down with care. This is just glass. Let's just treat it like glass. On the box, it also says it holds 10 ounces of coffee. This is the 0.7 liter version, so that um, that adds up. So there's that. But we'll talk more about sizes later on. But first, I wanna talk about what I like about the Atmos. So starting out, it's super user friendly. It's very easy to use. I feel like just looking at it, you kind of understand how it's supposed to work. And when you're a smooth brain like I am, it just makes it easier. And that sound. As an aspiring minimalist, I love the design. They're super clean and simple, kind of look good everywhere. And if you really want, you can have a white one or a black one. I went with the clear. I just think they look better. Plus they're a little bit cheaper. I have heard people worried about sunlight, but just keep it out of the sun. No big deal, you will be fine. And last but certainly not least, they actually work. So I put this coffee away about two months ago. I roasted it myself. I'm very familiar with this coffee. This is actually from my first release at Little Giant Coffee. This is an Ethiopian. It's very fruity and floral. And I put this away in the Atmos the day of roast and thought, you know, I'm gonna come back to this in a couple months and see what I think. So I'm gonna grind some up. I'm gonna pull a shot. I'm gonna smell these grounds. And I'm just gonna see if there's any noticeable difference after two months versus what I'm used to. And while putting the shot together, I'm not noticing any difference in the fragrance of the grounds. Everything is still as it should be. It's a very nice, sweet smell. You can definitely get a little bit of the fruity and floral notes from this coffee. And so let's see what it tastes like as a shot. And we're also going to look at a few things that we can gauge the freshness of the coffee with from the espresso shot. So a couple things we're gonna look for is the layers of the shot, as well as the depth of crema. So let's take a look as this pulls and see how it goes. Immediately I can see that it's layering up nicely. You've got the head, the body, and the heart, all in obvious delineations, and that beautiful cascading effect that happens as the shot was pulling. So I wouldn't guess that this is from two month old beans, but the real test is going to be, how does it actually taste? 
From the looks of it, the crema looks nice and thick. I'm not seeing any major holes or breaks or really even thin crema. I mean, it's not super thick because this is a washed coffee and washed coffees don't have that thick of crema to begin with just because the lack of fat and lipids in the coffee. But overall, everything looks normal and it tastes normal. You've got all the fruity and fragrant florals in there. You've got the sweetness, you've got the blueberry, the jasmine. It's just a nice coffee and there's no way for me to say that that would be two months old. Next up, we're gonna make a quick V60. We're gonna use the same beans as we did with the espresso. Remember, these are two months old, and let's just see how it comes out. Obviously, taste is going to be the main contributing factor here, but we're also gonna look for a couple things that we can measure freshness with. So, one thing that we're gonna look for is the bloom. If there isn't much gas left in there, generally that means the coffee has gone stale or just isn't generally that fresh. So, we're gonna see how the bloom works on this two month old coffee. And even though the bloom is one of the most important things we're gonna look at here, I'm gonna make sure that we do everything by the book with this pour over so I can taste it at the end and see if it's still held up in terms of drip coffee. So we've got our coffee in, now let's add some water and see what happens. Immediately I'm pretty happy with the amount of foam and the amount of bubbles we're getting. We're gonna give it a quick stir to make sure it's getting all the grounds wet and it's pretty clear to me that there's some good amount of gas still in there. So let's finish making this pour over and we're gonna give it a quick taste. But overall, just from looking at it, I wouldn't say that this is two month old coffee. But now it's time for the moment of truth, the taste test. So let's see if it held up as a pour over. And it absolutely did. All the notes are still there, all the subtlety is still there. It's still a great cup of coffee. Of course, we still need to talk about what I don't like about the Atmos. So first off, the awkward sizing. I find it odd that they chose 1.2 liter, which is 1200 grams, 0.7 liters, which is 700 grams, and 0.4 liters, which is 400 grams. They're just kind of awkward sizes and they don't really fit a bag of coffee in the real world. I think it would make more sense if they would have done a 10 ounce for the smallest, following up with a 12 ounce for the middle, and a 16 ounce for the top, as those are the three most common bag sizes in coffee. So that just makes sense to me. I would love to know why they chose those different sizes. Next up, it's just kind of a slippery critter. So there's no real grip to say on this top piece that you're supposed to spin to create the pressure. You'd think that they would put something on there. I don't think it would really detract from the styling of the unit, but as it starts to create more pressure and it starts to give you a little more resistance, it becomes harder to turn. I did find that turning the actual glass or the bottom portion does give you a little more leverage, but I would just love to see some kind of grip or something on this top twisty piece to just make it a little easier. Next up is the fact that it's hand wash only. That's not a big deal for me because I haven't had a dishwasher in years, but it could definitely be a turn off for some people as it does kind of require some effort. Also, cleaning this is a kind of a pain. You can't put any sort of water or moisture. You don't want it to get inside the pump. So you have to just wipe it with a damp microfiber cloth, which I did find works pretty well. But the other problem is the smells from the coffee kind of go inside that pump and they don't come out. And now let's talk final thoughts on the fellow Atmos. So I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by this unit. It's relatively inexpensive and it's just well designed. It's super simple, really clean, looks good anywhere, and it does keep your coffee fresh. It also seems like it's tailor-made for those of us who are single dosing, but even if you're not, I think it's a great option for any coffee lover to keep your coffee fresh, whether you make pour overs or espresso, it also fills that gap perfectly between the sealed bag from your roaster with the one-way valve or for the longer term of putting it in the freezer. So those are all great options for storage, but the Atmos kind of falls perfectly in that middle ground where you can have it for a couple months without having to throw it in the freezer and you don't have to worry about opening your bag too soon. And on that note, I'm turning it over to you. How do you store your coffee at home? Do you use an Atmos or some other unit? Have you found a different way to store your coffee that seems to work pretty well? Let me know in the comments down below, and thanks for watching. And of course, a big thank you to my May Patreon supporters, Ads, James B, David, Hamad, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Thomas B, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Joey, Thomas S, Noel, Spookus, 
Found Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Nathan, Aiden, Jonathan, Claire, Stephen, James K, Josh, Andrew, Ollie, Ninja Warrior Coffee, and Testing123. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want more information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos every Friday. Follow me on Instagram at Sprometheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Sprometheus.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy. <laughs>